All right, problem 86, we have the function f that's continuous and differentiable on this closed interval from three to seven. And this table above gives selected values of f on this interval. So which of the following statements must be true? So it says the minimum value of f on three to seven is 12 for the first statement. And it's um, the lowest value shown is 12, but it could very well be that it could go below 12 because we don't know what happens between four and five and five and six. Like, you know, the graph could dip down to negative 100 for all we know. So, so this is possible, but it says must be true. This could be true, but no, it doesn't have to be true. So it's not going to be one. Two, there exists C for C between three and seven such that F prime of C is zero. Okay, so. If we look at the endpoints, we have, they're both at 20. We have a point at 320 and another one at 720. So they both end at the same y value. And you know, it looks like it, it does, you know, decreases, decreases, and increases. Maybe. And, and again, we don't we don't know what it does between. We know it's continuous, so it connects. But for all we know, maybe it does something like this. Ooh. Now, the, there's a, something called the mean value theorem, which says that if you find the slope between the endpoints, this is about the mean value theorem, MVT, which you should know. It says that if you find the essentially geometrically, you connect the endpoints, and whatever that slope is. This slope is zero since they're both the same. That means that somewhere between those endpoints, there's also another value where the slope is zero. And you can see I just drew a random graph, and I would probably say here the slope is zero, and even here is zero. There's actually three just on this random graph. It's impossible to draw a continuous function that's differentiable on, on this interval without also making. Um, you know, points between those points having the same slope of zero. Like that's just going to happen geometrically, and and that's what the mean value theorem says. So C is true, or B or number two is true by the mean value theorem. And then three F prime of C or F prime of X is positive for X between five and seven. Um, and now again, it could be. It see, it does increase. But again, we don't know, maybe between five and six, maybe at 5.5, .5, it dips down to negative 10 and then goes back up. All we know is that it increases from these endpoints. We don't know what happens between, and same thing for six and seven. So three doesn't have to be true. It could be, but doesn't have to be true. So then two is the only one that has to be true. And so the answer is B. Right, 87. The figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of the function f on the open interval from negative 7 to 7. If f prime has four zeros from negative 7 to 7, how many relative maximum does f have on negative 7 to 7? Okay, so remember, a relative maximum occurs when a graph goes from increasing to decreasing. You know, you would have a maximum here. And this on this side, the derivative is positive, and on this side, the derivative is negative. Positive derivative, negative derivative. So maximum occurs when you go from a positive derivative to a negative derivative. So we wanted to look on this graph to see where the values go from positive to negative. So this one goes from negative to positive. This would be like a relative minimum. We only care about maximum, so we don't care about that. So it change from positive to negative. So the graph is positive over here, and it stays positive up until here. Then from here to here, it's negative. But see, at this point, it changes from positive to negative. So relative max occurs here. Here, again, there could be relative minimum. And again, like same thing with here, there could be relative minimum there. But since it's only asking for relative maximum, it only has to be one, only one. So the answer would be A. All 
All right, 88. The rate at which water is sprayed on a field of vegetable. <laughs> field of vegetable, that's interesting. Well, I mean, I don't know why I found that so funny, but a field of vegetable is interesting. It's given by R of T. I wonder what type of vegetables. Anyways, um, it's given by R of T is equal to two times the square root of one plus five T cubed, where T is in minutes and R of T is in gallons per minute. During the interval from zero to four, what is the average rate of water flow in gallons per minute? Um, this is, just remember the average value theorem. Um, and there's really not much to it, it's just the average value, average value of the integral. So we integrate this from, in this case, from one to four. And again, technically it says, you know, if you want to be all formal average value for some function is equal to one over B minus A of the function from A to B of F of whatever X. But again, just that is just the, um, it's just, it's just when you, it's just kind of like when you, when you find the average or the mean of a population for something, you divide by how many, how many people there are. This is just, you're dividing by the length of the interval. This is four units long. So you're just dividing by four, which is the same as one fourth. Because four minus zero is just four. And then you just integrate it. So this we can lead to our calculator. So we go to our menu, calculus. Two times square root of one plus five x cubed. Dx, bang, divide by four, boom, 14.69-ish. The answer is C. All right.